Hello and welcome to Blank First Page. My name is Lucas. In this homemade pen case here, I've got the only three types of pens that you're going to need this year. I've also got one bonus pen for you. First off, a pocket pen. If you have or if you're trying to develop a pocket notebook or everyday carry notebook habit, you just need a pocket pen. You want a pen that you carry around with you all day every day and therefore you don't want something that's large and obtrusive and gets in the way of your day-to-day -day movements. So you want something that almost gets lost in your pants pocket and that you don't even realize it's there until you need it. For example, when you're at the grocery store and you need to cross out the items on your grocery list. Most importantly, your best ideas will always come to you when you're out and about. They will never come to you when you're comfortably sitting at your desk, conveniently surrounded by your best pens. That's why you need a pocket pen. Even if you don't have a pocket notebook, if you've got a pen, you've always got your hand you can write on. Second, a fountain pen. So once you've got your great idea that maybe you've written on your hand, you can then use a fountain pen to more deliberately expand on that idea, maybe in a larger notebook when you're sitting at a desk. A fountain pen is a more complex and a more interesting writing instrument. It slows you down in a good way. The feel of the nib on the paper, the feedback that you get, all of those things that a fountain pen offers pulls you into the act of writing much more tangibly and in a much more tactile way. There's nothing like a fountain pen to add texture to the act of writing something down. And this slowing down mechanism that a fountain pen provides is great for when you're trying to organize your thoughts and ideas. The biggest benefit I found to being a fountain pen user is that it is counterintuitively a great deterrent to pen theft. Now I'm talking about the inadvertent pen theft of when you hand someone a pen because they need to write down something quickly and they then forget to hand the pen back to you. My theory for why this kind of unintentional pen theft happens is because most people are using very unremarkable pens, just your standard Bic or ballpoint pen. When you hand this to someone, you don't realize that you're giving a possession away and they don't realize that they have something that may be of value to you, so it's very easy to absentmindedly take off with it. But if you give someone a fountain pen, they're quite likely to make a comment about it, and that kind of discussion brings to the table and makes audible the fact that you have given a pen to someone else. So that fact is now in everyone's mind and when the person is finished writing they're more likely to give it back to you and if they don't it's not going to be surprising to them so it's not awkward for you if you ask for your nice fountain pen back. One unique exchange that you can have in this situation is that you offer someone a fountain pen and because they don't know how to use a fountain pen they feel intimidated by writing with your fancy writing instrument so they'll actually go and look for another pen somewhere else, therefore your risk of losing your pen is actually eliminated. And then you'll also need a pencil. Now I know this is not maybe technically a pen, I don't know what the technical definition of a pen is, but given that it's part of the word pencil and that it is more generally a writing instrument, I'm fine with including it in this list. You need a pencil. It is most importantly and most usefully a less permanent writing instrument than an ink-based one is. Sometimes if you want to write something down or sketch something out, there's a subconscious pull on you that tells you if I'm writing this down in ink on paper, I am committing to something permanently. And that might create a bit of a barrier to you actually expressing that idea or that sketch on paper, um, which is not good for the creative process. So I have often found that the simple act of writing with something that is not permanent, the subconscious knowledge that this thing could be erased, helps me just get the thing down, get the thing on paper. I'm not concerned about it not being perfect or messing up my page because worst case scenario, I can erase it. So to prevent against any form of creative block, get yourself a pencil and keep it in your kit. So now here are my selections for each of these categories. They are housed within this homemade pen case, pen roll, and I made it out of a couple of old bags of flour. I like making things out of this flour bag craft paper. Um, I've made notebooks out of it as well. It's got this 
good combination of rigidity but also flexibility which makes it good for objects like this. Works quite nicely and sounds great too. So we'll start off with the pocket pen category and for that I've selected these two pens here. My go-to pocket pen is this Kaweco Lilliput Mini. It's a click pen. It basically disappears completely in a front jeans pocket. It is pretty slender, very smooth, somewhat heavy, so it has a good weight to it when you're writing with it. Easy click so that you're quickly writing notes or crossing out your grocery items. It's also made entirely of solid brass, so it's quite durable, doesn't mind being jingle jangled around with a set of keys or whatever else you might have in your pocket and it responds really well to being worn in so it's, this starts out as quite a polished brass but eventually it takes on this nice wear and patina and which just adds to its character. The alternative is a Kaweco Sport. Here I've got the fountain pen version just to show that you could mix and match these categories. So your pocket pen could also be your fountain pen in this case. But this also comes in a ballpoint version, bit of a different style obviously, so that you have this unscrewing motion, not as quick as just clicking the pen on, but a great front pocket pen anyway. You can use it without the clip entirely, which just slides off. So this is then even less of an intrusive object in your front pocket. If you slide the clip back on, you can even use it for something like this, where it's not quite a pocket pen, but it is small and unobtrusive enough that as you're walking around, it's not really annoying. Now for the fountain pens. My most frequently used fountain pens are these two right here. I've got my Twisby Diamond 580 ALR in a fine nib and the Muji Aluminium fountain pen, which only comes in a fine nib. Both of these are super reliable fountain pens. I've got them both filled with platinum carbon black ink. The Twisby is a piston mechanism. My Muji I've got fitted with a piston converter, but you could also use cartridges if you want as well. They're simple pens. I've had the Twisby 580 for a number of years now, and I haven't ever taken it apart to re-grease the piston or anything like that. I do take the nib off sometimes and do a bit of a deeper clean that way, but I've left both of these pens unused for months at a time and as soon as I start writing with them, they're straight back to fighting form and good to go. They're both well made and hold up well to being used in a sort of robust manner as a daily pen. I will often use my Twisby like this, have it clipped in, especially if it is my current work pen. I just run around the office with it like this for easy access. My Muji I've also used as a pocket pen. Even though it's long, it's narrow enough that it kind of sits on the side of the front pocket even, so that even when you're sitting down, um, it doesn't jab into any part of your thigh uncomfortably. Because it is a metal-bodied pen, again, it holds up to being clanged around with coins or keys that you might have in your pocket. And finally, both of them are really good for just long writing sessions at your desk. The ink just keeps flowing, the nib scratches the right amount on many different types of paper, and they're just two enjoyable pens to use. For the pencil, I've got two different types. First off, the Blackwing Natural with the extra firm core. This starts out about this size, but when it's at this full length, it's too long to fit properly in this case. In my opinion, this is the absolute best pencil you can use if you're just a note taker. Obviously, if you need pencils for sketching or for art reasons, you're gonna need different firmnesses and some variety in, in the core itself, but if you are just a pencil note taker, this is all you need. It's firm enough so you're not constantly running out of lead and sharpening so frequently, but it's also soft enough that it puts a good dark line down when you're writing. 
And as an alternative, I'm suggesting a mechanical pencil. This one is sort of just a cheap Muji pe mechanical pencil that I am borrowing. Um, and I've been using it for a month or so with my everyday carry notebook and I'm quite enjoying it. With a mechanical pencil, you always lose a bit of the charm of the sharpening activity. Um, it doesn't feel like a pencil. Obviously a pencil is typically made out of wood and you can feel that even if it's got a coating of paint on it. This mechanical pencil definitely feels more like a pen, but on the flip side, if you don't like the feeling of pencils, but you want to activate this hack of getting over certain creative blocks that I mentioned before, you can use something like this because it is a pencil but feels like a pen. And the final specific benefit of a mechanical pencil is you don't have to have a sharpener with you. So if you want to write in pencil but you're traveling a lot or you don't want to be carrying around a sharpener with you to meetings and so on, a mechanical pencil is the way to go. And for the bonus round of pens you need, my choice goes to a felt tip pen. I'm suggesting this standard Muji pen. You can use things like Sharpies, obviously, but I like this type of pen in particular that has a finer felt tip. It just feels a bit more refined than the standard kind of Sharpie type pen. I find it's good to have an alternative to the typical pen or pencil. Sometimes you just want to change things up. You want a bit of a different writing feel and the felt tip is very different to any of the other types. It's, it's useful for when you're writing down big bold words, not necessarily whole sentences, but titles, words, things you're working on for a project. It helps the words jump out at you and you don't ever quite get that same effect using a, any type of pen or pencil necessarily. So a felt tip pen is good to have in your toolkit to change things up and also to add another dimension to your writing experience. So set yourself up with a selection of these pens. Maybe you can also make yourself a homemade pen case like this and you'll be well equipped for your upcoming year of note taking. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.